You probably think you know what all cars are like. As different as cars can be, they're all pretty similar, right? Well, no. Some are truly different. Truly unique. Truly baffling and odd. These are the strangest cars ever made, number two. Number 15. Renault Easy Ultimo. Remember when we were kids and we tried to picture what the future would be like? We imagined flying cars zipping around everywhere by now and some pretty futuristic cars. Well, a car designer at Renault must have had the same idea, at least where their Easy Ultimo is concerned. This ultra-futuristic automobile was unveiled as a concept car by Renault at the Paris Motor Show in 2018. According to Renault, it's an electric robo-vehicle that's completely connected and autonomous. It also looks kind of like it's been flattened by another car, but we won't get into that. The Renault EZ Ultimo is every bit as unique as you would expect from a concept car. It has two-tone bodywork with green and black on the lower section, then champagne coloring on the top area. The colors merging together almost look a bit like yin and yang. Perhaps even more exciting is that the upper half has 600 diamond-shaped facets that you can see out of when you're a passenger, but not into if you're a passerby. The interior is even more shocking, with a wooden floor, armchairs, a bench, and decor not too dissimilar from the average living room. Would you own this? I'm not convinced. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. No matter how many cars you've seen in your life, we bet you've never seen one quite like this before, huh? The eye-catching row of lights at the front is enough to grab your attention, but that's not all. Take a look at the bottom. The car is built in such a way that it almost hides the wheels, kind of giving the impression that it's floating. We think it's awesome, but that's debatable. What isn't is that it is definitely strange, though we kind of like it. It gives the car something of a futuristic vibe. As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things. Things moving. Number 14. BMW Isetta. BMW has been responsible for some amazing cars, like the Series 1 M Coupe and M5 Touring E61. But we wouldn't quite put their Isetta in the same category as these cars. It is without a doubt the strangest car they've ever released to the market. After World War II, BMW wasn't the big deal it is today. So they purchased a small city car from ISO and named it the Isetta. Many of the models released only had three wheels, and the only door it had opened from the front. So when you swing it open, you're also opening the steering column and entire front end of the car. That wasn't even the worst part. Even though it was a lightweight car, it was also incredibly slow. It might be quicker to just lift it and walk, rather than relying on its engine power alone. It couldn't climb a hill, and even if it could, it had no reverse gear to maneuver out of parking spaces or driveways. You practically had to push it more often than you drove it. To say it's a terrible car to drive and own is quite possibly an understatement. Number 13. Mercedes-Benz F015 Perhaps one of the most futuristic cars is the Mercedes-Benz F015, a self-driving luxury saloon that premiered at the Consumer Electronics Show in 2015. With S500 Intelligent Drive and a whole host of technological advancements to make it a self-driving masterclass, Mercedes means business. Rather than simply creating a concept car with autonomous driving that still takes on the traditional car layout, they've gone for a different approach. They turned the interior of the vehicle into a sort of meeting room. With no driver at the wheel, all passengers are free to sit in any of the four separate seats facing each other in a luxury setting. There is open poor walnut wood, ice white Napa leather, and a contrast of organic and synthetic materials. Six displays also feature in the vehicle to transform it into a digital living space, and there are large LED displays at the front and the rear. Then, when it hits the road, that's when the magic truly happens. 
This Mercedes has an electric hybrid system with an 1100 kilometer range. It travels similar distances to a comparable diesel vehicle, but on electric power with no local emissions. Number 12. General Motors Firebird 3 Ask any car enthusiast and they'll likely tell you that one of the most intriguing concept cars in history was the General Motors Firebird 3. In the 1950s, jet engines were on trend, so General Motors took advantage of that trend by building space-like concept cars for Motorama shows. They started with Firebird 1, which seemed to be as loud as a 747 plane, and had the dangerous problem of setting everything in its wake on fire. So the formula was improved with Firebird Firebird 2 before, eventually, Firebird 3 became the car that turned heads. This concept car had a double bubble cockpit, jet turbines, a central joystick control, and a huge appetite for gas. And that was basically what would stop it from being a car you would see for sale today. Being able to enjoy its turbines reaching 50,000 RPM with ease would burn a hole in your back pocket, so it always remained a concept car. But what an impressive concept car it was. It was powered by a GT305 Whirlfire and had vertical and horizontal fins. It was also relatively lightweight, which was surprising since it needed a second engine to power the air conditioning, self-leveling suspension, and power steering. Number 11. Learjet Limo with a price tag of 5 million bucks, it's only natural to be curious about the Learjet limo. Is it worth that money? What even is it? Well, it's not something you see every day, that's for sure. It's a road legal limo built around a Learjet fuselage. It's basically a plane car. The company that produced it spent over a million dollars making it, which might surprise you until you learn that it has many handmade panels, both on the exterior and interior. It also accommodates up to eight people and has illuminated plexiglass panels, a TV, speakers, LED infinity flooring, and mood lighting. It's as luxurious as it sounds. Strangely, the Learjet limo also drives like most large vehicles, such as a bus. It weighs over five tons, but has has a supposed top speed of about 100 miles or 160 kilometers an hour. But I have some concerns. Firstly, imagine trying to parallel park this beast. After all, it has massive exterior engine housings. These are used for speakers, but still, it must be tricky to park with. I also have some doubts about the ease of being able to do a U-turn. Then there's a price tag. Who has five million bucks lying around for a vehicle that seems utterly impractical to drive? Number 10. Extreme Super Truck Most of the pickup trucks you can buy today are pretty cool. Some are also quite large, which is helpful if you're in an industry that requires something with plenty of space and power. But for the owners of Southeast Utilities in Augusta, Georgia, the offerings from pickup truck manufacturers just weren't enough for them. Chris Walker and George Stickler were keen to sell two trucks they owned and buy a Super Duty F650, but decided they had a better idea. They built a massive pickup truck they called the Extreme Super Truck, and it was a head-turner in every sense of the word. People took notice, and it wasn't long before their work was in high demand. They sold their extreme super truck on eBay in just two hours to Arnold Schwarzenegger and got to work creating a new one. Now, they make a living out of customizing trucks for those who need them for work, but sometimes those who probably just want the status. For example, they've had customers like Shaquille O'Neal and Jay Leno. They start with a factory-built F650 or International and spend about 17 weeks and up to 50 weeks creating the pickup of their customers' dreams. Each truck can end up costing up to $250,000. It's actually cheaper than I expected. Number 9. Submarine Sports Car in 2007, Rin Speed, a Swiss company, released a car that looked pretty cool, but it didn't look unusual, if you know what I mean. But as usual as this car looked, it was anything but. 
It was called Escuba, or Scuba, I'm gonna go with Scuba, clever name. And it was a car that could drive on the road, then, by pushing a button, could dive into the sea to depths of 33 feet. According to Rin Speed, the Scuba was the first car to drive on land and underwater due to its cutting edge technology. It has lightweight panels made of carbon nanotubes attached to a steel chassis and is also fitted with an electric motor. The rear wheel drive helps it drive on the road, but two propellers and two jet drives in the bow help it become amphibious. This car doesn't even produce emissions, which means it's environmentally friendly on the road and in the sea. But what about people driving it? Won't they drown? Well, this company fortunately thought of that. The two-seater Scuba has a self-contained onboard oxygen system. This makes sure the driver and passenger can breathe fresh air. This spectacular car was presented at the Geneva Motor Show, but as you can imagine, won't be mass-produced for the foreseeable future. Number 8. Stout Scarab Close your eyes and picture a minivan. Now open them and look at this Stout Scarab. It's not very minivan-like, is it? Yet some credit it as being the first production minivan. Wow, we've come a long way. The Stout Scarab was an American car from the 1930s and 40s designed by William Bushnell Stout. It was produced by Stout Engineering Laboratories and later Stout Motor Car Company in Detroit, Michigan. So most cars had a separate chassis and body and a long hood with the engine located behind the front axle before the passenger compartment. But the Stout Scarab was different. Instead of a chassis and drive shaft, it had a low, flat floor for the interior. A Ford-built V8 engine sat in the rear. Oddly, Stout actually pictured this vehicle as an office on wheels. It had a variety of unique features that set it apart from the other cars on the road, and these cost a pretty penny. Buying one new would have set you back $5,000, which was about $80,000 in 2010. As a result, only nine were ever made, and about five are thought to exist today. Number 7. Trucktopus Steve Francis is the proud owner of an eight-wheeled street rod called Trucktopus that took him two decades to build. To see what it started as to what it is today is absolutely incredible. Steve has always been interested in mini trucks and attended car shows as a young boy. He's never liked leaving anything stock standard, including his vehicles, so it was only natural that his Isuzu truck wouldn't stay the same for long. It started life as a 1989 Isuzu LS Space Cab, which became Steve's weekend vehicle. However, over a 20-year period, he transformed it into a three-axle, eight-wheel, 20-foot-long trucktopus that turns heads everywhere it goes. He initially retained the four-cylinder engine it came with, but it now has a small-block Chevy 350 CI V8 with a 700R4 transmission. He completed the look with 20-inch rims, side mirrors from a Harley-Davidson, and suicide doors. It's also hard not to notice the airbag suspension, dropped body, and rodeo truck grill, lights, and bumper. But what's in that massively long truck bed? Well, under two to no covers are LCD screens and hidden batteries. The cab also has JBL subwoofers and amps, an Alpine head unit, and leather and suede seats. Number 6. Ecto-1 the Ecto-1 was a 1959 Cadillac used in Ghostbusters to bust ghosts throughout New York City. You can't, of course, buy this car, but one man was such a fan of the comedy film that he decided to build his own replica. Side by side, you probably couldn't tell the difference. Over a period of five years, Marimbola resident Chris Miller from Australia restored a 1969 Cadillac Miller Meteor to make it look exactly like the car Bill Murray drove in the 1984 film. It even had lights and sirens. Chris said it was a chance for him to get in touch with his eight-year-old self, and he's happy with how it turned out. He bought the rare car model in Queensland and bought many of the accessories for it online. Slowly, over time, he added parts to make it look exactly like the car from the film. He installed all the roof gear, painted it, and made sure it was road legal. Even though there are other replicas in the world, Chris's is the only one in Australia that's actually suitable for use on the road. Although, he says it feels like he's driving a big boat. Number 5. Hot Tub Cadillac 
When you have a friend to bounce ideas off, it's amazing how many crazy things you can come up with. For two crafty Canadian engineers, that crazy thing was gonna be the world's fastest hot tub Cadillac. The two engineers spent 15 years planning the Carpool DeVille, a rear-wheel drive caddy with a 7.7-liter V8 to keep the water in the pool a balmy 38 degrees. Not only do they have a pool in their car, but the car is fully drivable and the hot tub is fully operational with water jets. They purchased the 1969 Cadillac Coupe DeVille for around 800 bucks and immediately got to work stripping it, reinforcing the frame, and making sure it was suitable for the installation of a hot tub. With all those boxes ticked, they can now drive this car while sitting in a hot tub. Doesn't get much more absurd or awesome than that. But that wasn't even the end of their adventure. They started crowdfunding to take the car to Bonneville Speed Week in Utah and set the world record of having the world's fastest hot tub. I'd say it's a bit of a one-horse race, though, don't you think? Number 4. Boater Home it seems unfair that most people have to choose between owning a boat and a motorhome. If you have a limited budget, you can't enjoy both of these recreational purchases. Or can you? If you own a boater home, you'll be able to have the best of both worlds. The concept of a boater home was developed as far back as the 1980s, with the cab of a Ford E-Series van being combined with a 28-foot boat. It could drive like an ordinary RV, but the rear could be lowered into the water to make it a fully functional boat. John Ortlieb appeared on an episode of Ridiculous Rides with not one, but two boater homes. One is fully functional, but the other was a project. Their simplicity will probably surprise you. You can get into the boater home through a front hatch that allows you to access what is essentially the living area. It has a fridge, kitchen counter, sofas that turn into pull-out beds at night, a bathroom, and a captain's chair. Once it becomes a fully functional boat, there's even underwater lighting, a foghorn, and a rich tractable ladder. Number 3. 1961 Amphicar Whenever we see car manufacturers in this day and age making cars that can tread water, we think, wow, technology is awesome. But as cool as this tech is, it's not new. The Amphicar 770, produced from around 1971, was the first mass-produced vehicle to drive on land and sea. They're rare to find today, and most can't float in the water now, but 3,878 were put into production. Out of that number, 3,046 were imported into America. When it was launched in Germany, it was the best thing since sliced bread. However, the manufacturer went out of business just seven short years later. It was a huge hit at first, but sales dwindled and production stopped when manufacturing processes became quite expensive. The U.S. also changed their EPA regulations, which meant 90% of the customer base was lost. Ethan Langley owns one of the very few that remain seaworthy today. He said the Amphicar is essentially built like a tank with a belly pan and is completely sealed. He also said it's phenomenal in the water and is an all-around great vehicle on land and in the water. I'd own one, would you? Number 2. 1962 Peel P50 with oil supplies under threat during the Suez Crisis of 1956, micro cars like the 1962 Peel P50 were among the most popular on the market. They could run on the smell of an oily rag and were a dream to park. Not to mention, they weren't all that much more complicated than a moped, but offered shelter and protection from the elements. Don't get me wrong, most people in their right mind wouldn't purchase this old classic from the 1950s and 60s now, but it was a cracker back in the day. The Peel P50 was a single-seated three-wheeler with a DKW motorcycle engine under the hood. It has a three-speed gearbox with no reverse function and was the world's smallest production car. It also had the title of being the only one built on the Isle of Man. Some people might have been put off by the fact that you couldn't throw it into reverse, but let's face it, the fact that it weighed just 130 pounds means you could just lift it and spin it in the right direction. It might not have had much room for groceries, but it was almost cheaper than walking. Number 1. Banana Car Why have an ordinary car when you can have one that looks like your favorite type of fruit? 
For reasons unknown, Kalamazoo, Michigan resident Steve Braithwaite built a banana car out of a Ford F-150 pickup truck. His banana car started its journey as a 1993 truck before becoming a rolling banana replica with the help from the fabrication studio Mutant Brothers. Now, he tours around the United States in it, gives rides to kids, and takes it to fairs. Matchbox must have been pretty impressed, because now they sell a Kalamazoo Big Banana Car toy, which you can buy on Amazon. As you would imagine, a giant banana traveling down the road with four passengers gets a lot of attention, and they were pulled over at about 7.30 one morning by police in 2020 while heading on a road trip to Texas. After running the plate split, one of the only excuses to have a vanity license plate, and hearing the story about the car, the state trooper gave him a $20 bill back with his license and sent him on his way. Funnily enough, this 23-foot car holds the record for being the longest custom banana car in the world. But it's also the only one. Now my car just seems boring. I need to get my hands on an Amphicar or a vehicle in the shape of a banana. Maybe a, a banana Amphicar. Ampha banana. Ooh, how cool would that be? If you could have any of these vehicles, which would it be and why? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.